a link that is um, in the chat for a uh, a list, um, a guide online we put together. We took some of uh, Laura's resources that she shared and put them in a guide that you guys can access. So some, these are some of the, the sources and pages that she is going to go through today. So can everybody see my slides? Just making sure that I'm sharing the right screen. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, just kind of first starting off with some background about art and feminism and kind of why um, we do this. So these are kind of some facts um, from just various sources um, that I've used in the past, um, kind of representing uh, women uh, in the arts and then how women are represented in various resources, not just on Wikipedia, but other, other places that people may find information about women in the arts. Um, I think the other kind of important piece is um, Wikimedia contributors. So Wikimedia and Wikipedia contributors are predominantly male. Um, the most recent community insight survey shows that um, only 12% of um, contributors to the community um, identified as female um, and less than 2% as non-binary. So basically art and feminism is an international community um, that strives to close the gap about um, gender feminism and the arts on the internet. And basically, hopefully today, I mean, this will help you um, become an editor and, and help close that gap. And one of the ways that we do that is through edit-a-thons, which are community events, um, basically where people come together um, and not necessarily, you know, like one person teaching other, Per, like just me teaching people, but I mean, hopefully everybody working together to teach each other um, how to better contribute to Wikipedia and how to make that project work better. Um, everyone, anyone is in, you know is interested in learning and working together and is more than welcome um, to attend. So any type of experience, gender background, um, hopefully will contribute to an edit-a-thon event. Um, these kind of, in some ways come out of kind of like just kind of an idea of doing things together, so a do-a-thon or a hackathon um, type event. So it's really kind of just diving in and getting things done. So some basics about Wikipedia. Um, so some of this, I mean, Wikipedia has now been around for 20 years. And so most people, I mean, have heard of Wikipedia. In some cases, most people have at some point heard, you know, reasons why they shouldn't use Wikipedia. Um, but it's definitely something that has a presence um, in our life. Um, anytime that we do a search, um, you know, Wikipedia often shows up there as, you know, one of those top results um, for anything that we might be finding. And as a result, it's one of the most visited websites um, in the world. Um, it is an encyclopedia. So that's kind of that specific format of information. I'm really kind of focused on these like individual articles on topics. And I like to emphasize um, that it's also a volunteer community. Um, it's one of the very few sources um, of like most used information on the web that is contributed by people, not by a company. So, I mean, it's owned by a foundation. I mean, it's a nonprofit foundation, not a corporation like Google or Facebook or Twitter or various other places that um, can have a different purpose in the information ecosystem. And you're not really meant to read the information on the slide, but I have to kind of zoom way out um, to show you all the different languages um, that Wikipedia is in. Um, so we're most familiar uh, in the United States usually with English Wikipedia, um, but Wikipedia exists in about 300 different languages. Um, and so it is a global um, phenomenon, not just something um, in the United States. Um, it was kind of very in size, but definitely lots of different ways to get involved. Um, there. I also like to point out that the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the nonprofit that runs Wikipedia, runs a variety of other um, free information projects. Um, so, for instance, Wikimedia Commons, uh, which has photos and media, uh, Wikidata, which is a structured knowledge base, various things for species, sources, travel, dictionaries, um, different types of things. Um, so, sometimes I mean, Wikipedia is the most recognized brand in that, but there are lots of other projects um, going on um, with the foundation in which people kind of sometimes work across um, different projects and there's links between those projects. So that's kind of 
I don't know, some basics about Wikipedia? I mean, are there kind of questions that people have had in their mind about just general Wikipedia-ness? In that case, I will jump into kind of some guidelines for editing on Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has been around, like I said, for, for 20 years now. And kind of as a community, um, people have tried to kind of find a set of systems that help to ensure high quality information and help to basically ensure that Wikipedia as a resource is something that can be trusted. And I think with all systems, I mean, there's kind of a balance of trying to find, you know, something that helps the product to exist and trying to find a way um, to represent all sorts of different types of information. Um, and so in some ways, I mean, this kind of sounds like a list of rules, but there's ways to kind of work within kind of these guidelines. So I think one thing to take in mind is that all of this is guidelines. Um, so the first um, is neutrality. And so that's the idea that Wikipedia tries to present a balanced point of view. I think one of the challenges to that is just kind of the representation of people that edit on Wikipedia. And so by kind of broadening that community, I mean, I think that we help to address neutrality. But I think another piece of that to keep in mind as you edit on Wikipedia is there may be lots of different views um, that are represented in trying to like work with the community to ensure that all different perspectives are represented. And sometimes, I mean, that's helping, you know, to help advance your perspective, but also recognizing that other people um, may be presenting information on Wikipedia also. Another one that has some pluses and minuses is verifiability. So one of the things that helps to ensure that Wikipedia is a trusted resource is that everything on Wikipedia should be cited to a verifiable source. So somebody can basically go outside of Wikipedia and verify that whatever facts that you're presenting there came from somewhere else. Um, there's some challenges in that and just kind of what information um, gets put into verifiable sources and kind of what those trusted sources are. So it's just something to keep in mind. And so related to that also is this concept of new original research. And this is the idea that just because you know somebody something and you have personal experience with something, um, that is a much harder source um, to use on Wikipedia um, just because of this concept of no, no original resource research. Um, so that's kind of the idea that, you know, like, so you look at a piece of art and you see that it's blue, you really need to find a source that says that this piece of art is blue. Um, and so that's just kind of working on, on those sources and how, how information is constructed on Wikipedia. And so another one to keep in mind, especially kind of working from a GLAM perspective is the concept of conflict of interest. Um, Wikipedia has some increasingly some very strict rules about um, paid editing. Um, and so just trying to keep it clear um, about kind of what your background may be. And so there is actually an option for a user page on Wikipedia where you can provide a little bit of information about yourself and your background. Um, and that's important to use if you're editing um, about yourself, uh, your family. Uh, your friends, your organizations, your clients, your competitors. And in general, like you shouldn't be editing about those things. Um, the preferred method on Wikipedia is to basically post suggestions using the talk page or the um, kind of conflict of interest notice board that there's something that needs improvement, but to not do it yourself, to let somebody else um, do that work. And there's lots of different ways to request that those edits get made. Um, and that's preferable over doing it yourself just because it's sometimes hard to detach yourself from, you know, like kind of that, um, that original research, like what you know about yourself and kind of what is in, you know, a source um, that can be used. Um, other one that I like to point out, especially for art and feminism is the concept of notability. And so notability on Wikipedia, you don't have to be famous um, to be on Wikipedia, but there does need to be significant coverage. So that generally means you know, more than a, a sentence somewhere in a newspaper article. I mean, it's ideal if there's a, um, you know, a full you know, a magazine article or newspaper article about that topic, a book chapter, a journal article would be super ideal. Um, and I like to try to recommend, especially for starting new articles as a new editor, that you have at least two, two sources 
about something that you're going to write about, um, that these are reliable sources. Um, so that's that preference for published information um, and that they're independent of the subject. And so in some ways that you can use, um, for instance, like somebody's Facebook page or their personal website to supplement information, but not to establish their notability on Wikipedia. Um, and that's because anybody could create you know, their own website for something, um, but not necessarily. Um, yeah, that, so it can help to provide information to supplement an article, but doesn't um, establish the article by itself. Can I ask a question about that? So sure. can, can the article be quite old? So let's say that um, someone was written about in the 50s in a paper or in a newspaper or in an article, especially like we have some people that were familiar around the in the Southwest around the around the war, but then maybe not known so much after after that. Um, so uh, does, does it have to be a recent article or can you go back? No, it doesn't have to be a recent article. It doesn't even have to be an online article. It just has to be, I mean, a, a source that somebody else could find. Um, so that you have to be able to kind of provide a citation that somebody could get to that information. That's that. Great, thanks. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is copyrights. And so Wikipedia is a, um, Creative Commons licensed resource. Um, so everything on Wikipedia is basically free um, to be reused as long as people attribute where they got it from and they allow that work to be reshared again. And so as a result of that, um, when you add to Wikipedia, you license your, your work under that, that license. And it's kind of just important to remember that just in the United States, the prevailing um, law is that, I mean, as you create something, you own the copyright of it. Uh, and so if you're copying and pasting from, from anywhere, um, yeah, you're, yeah, I mean, that can be a potential copyright violation. And so it's really important to just make sure that you, you paraphrase things and use citations to show um, where you got your work from. Um, this is a slide I have um, for working with undergraduates, um, but just important to remind um, folks of this also. And so kind of by paraphrasing and kind of putting that in your original information, you really help to support that information being broadly reshared, I think is the important kind of takeaway from that. Um, if you take information that's copyrighted, that may lead to just issues down the road because somebody may detect that copyright violation. Um, and then finally, I mean, I feel like I went through a lot of rules and um, I mean, it you know, kind of sometimes feels like, oh, this is all the things you can't do on Wikipedia, but ultimately, um, I mean, all of those are guidelines. Um, Wikipedia really prides itself on the idea that there are no firm rules. You can really be bold and you can experiment. Um, you know, sometimes, I mean, the community you know, may not necessarily react positively to that, but I think really working as a community and working together, I mean, to kind of try to think about, you know, how we address editing kind of within these constraints and kind of, you know, where we can be able to push the boundaries on those constraints is actually a really important part of Wikipedia. Um, so I encourage everybody to be bold. It's okay to experiment. Um, it's okay to learn, um, things like that. I mean, things may not go the way that you expect them to go the first time, but that's that's definitely okay. That's part of, of learning and, and being part of the Wikipedia community. So questions on those things? So just a couple things to get started. Um, do you folks in general have Wikipedia accounts? So basically at the top of pretty much any Wikipedia page, if you do not have an account and you are not logged in, um, you can click on that little button that says create an account and you'll go to a page that allows you to create an account. There are millions of Wikipedia accounts. And so a lot of the usernames um, that you may be familiar with or you know, use elsewhere um, could easily be taken. Um, so you may have to kind of experiment a little bit to create a create an account if you don't have one already. Um, a couple of guidelines to keep in mind is you should create an account as an individual. Um, shared accounts aren't allowed. Um, and you should probably just consider whether you want to edit under your real name or under a pseudonym. Um, people have kind of different comfort levels with that. Um, I, I, I use a username because when I got started, I didn't know that I would get um, very involved in this, but on my user page, I do identify who I am. Um, and so that's kind of something 
you know, I mean, just for you to make a personal decision about. Um, and like I said, I mean, um, you shouldn't make an account for your organization, but if you do want to make an account that is in some ways kind of right off the bat does affiliate you with an organization, you could use kind of that pattern, like your name and then the name of the organization. So if you just kind of wanted to be upfront about that in your editing. And then the other thing that I like to show folks is that there is a sandbox. Um, so there's a generic sandbox that just like English Wikipedia draft to sandbox. Um, it's just kind of a page that people can edit on and then it just disappears. And then each individual also has a sandbox. Um, so just at your username slash sandbox, or if once you're logged in, um, you have that option to click on sandbox. And that's a space where if you want to make a draft article, um, you just wanted to kind of play out, try some of the features, um, that's a good place to just try some stuff out. So those are just kind of a couple things to get started. What I think I might do now is just switch over to um, Wikipedia itself. And so this is just the kind of regular generic English Wikipedia page, hopefully. Um, I picked an article somewhat at random, but related to Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, and so kind of just showing kind of some different parts, parts of an article. Um, kind of at the top, this first sentence, and it's kind of longer depending on an article. This is the lead. It's a little bit bigger. So this is just a general summary of the article. Um, so just kind of like a quick overview for folks. Um, Wikipedia will automatically create tables of contents um, for all of the articles based on the headings. So kind of as you put article, if you put, if you put headings into your article, and it'll make a table of contents um, for your article. Um, there is also the ability, um, basically if you add citations, it'll create a nice bibliography for you. Um, so that kind of is something that it, um, I don't know a lot of students when they look at that, they're like, oh, my, I wish my term papers would do that. Um, so Wikipedia, they try to make um, citing resources as easy as possible. And so that's something that's fairly automatic. Um, there is also kind of various different templates that you can add to articles. So, I mean, this is a template um, related to Georgia O'Keeffe here. There's a template related to authority control. Um, so kind of linking the articles to just various different um, organizations that may have identifiers um, for this artist. And then, um, categories, um, so the ability to kind of add some categorization um, to different articles. So this is an article that um, looks right now that it's not linked to other um, languages, but um, sometimes there is a language list here. There's also a link to Wikidata. Um, so Wikidata is that st structured knowledge base that I was talking about, and in this case, Basically, you have a subject and then just kind of lots of just kind of individual facts um, that get put into Wikidata. Kind of the like kind of what I what I consider often like the public facing um, part of a Wikipedia article. Um, sometimes up at the top, they will provide um, essentially some meta information to help you improve an article. So. Um, one task actually that you can do is go around Wikipedia and help people identify potential problems with articles so that they maybe know where to start in fixing them. Um, the other thing at the top of every Wikipedia article, and some people just overlook this because you kind of just immediately jump down into the article, but there is a set of kind of different functions up here at the top. Um, and so one of them is the talk page. And so the doc page is a sort of a meta place where if there's improvements that are needed for the article or if the article you know, might fit into certain projects or things like that, um, the conversation about that goes on in the doc page. And this one doesn't really have any conversation, but does have some categories. Um, there is also a history. And so every edit that you make on Wikipedia, um, is recorded. So even if somebody was to go in and delete an entire article, um, the history of that article being there is part of the wiki platform and how wikis are built. And so there basically is a 
kind of just an, a log of each, each individual edit that was made as a part of the article. Um, and you can go back to kind of that first article and see kind of what was there when it was first written and kind of, actually diff is kind of the better way of doing it, um, step through kind of each of the edits of how that article was improved um, or not improved or vandalized or whatever may have happened to it. Um, you can see each of, each of those edits, um, which is kind of cool because you can watch basically how an, an article evolves over time. Um, and then the other option at the top is to edit. Um, I have preferences on mine that allows both editing kind of in the visual editor and visiting the uh, editing in the source editor. Um, I think for new editors by default, you generally get the source editor, which looks something like this, um, where everything is basically written in a wiki markup language. Um, so everything, this is kind of basically, you know, telling the different formatting. Um, there's little templates for things like citations, um, stuff like that. For new editors, um, I don't recommend this. I recommend using the visual editor and to switch and you can click on the pencil and switch over to visual editing. And visual editing is a what you see is what you get um, type editor. And so basically it's very, very similar to working in something like Microsoft Word, um, whereas everything is sort of formatted the way that you might expect it to be. And you just go where you want to go and type things. Um, so um, I noticed that like the section didn't have any citations at all. Um, I noticed, I mean, that there's a little bit of biographical historical note um, in your archive guide. So one nice thing about Wikipedia is you can basically just copy and paste the link. Um, you can use the cite button, those little quotes and cite. And there's actually like an automatic citation tool. So you can put a URL, a, a DOI, so a document, um, object identifier, an ISBN number, um, anything like that. It will try to generate a citation for you. Um, some of the citations are better than others, but it can at least be a starting place and at least puts a link in to kind of where information came from. If you, can, if you do an automatic citation, it doesn't quite work for you, you can edit it. Um, and this is the same as doing a manual um, edit where you can basically, it gives you a set of fields and you can fill in the information um, that you might want to change. Why doesn't every program do that for me? <laughs> right, right. I mean, that's what, my, that's what my undergrads like always ask uh, when we're doing this is just kind of why, why, why. Um, so yeah, so that's citations. Um, if you wanted to like, I don't know why you would in this case, but like if you wanted to apply formatting, so if you want to make it bold or italic, I mean, you can do that. Um, you can change the headings, so kind of those different levels of headings to make that automatic um, like a table of contents for the article. Um, if you want to link, um, like, so like we have the San Antonio, Texas, but I don't know, Mexico is probably too common a concept, but if you wanted to make a link for that, um, this little chain link um, thing here, um, you can put in that concept and it will look for other Wikipedia articles. Um, that are basically like use that word um, and you can make a basically an inner wiki link. So a link from one Wikipedia article to another Wikipedia article. Um, those are kind of like a lot of them. I mean, there's some bulleted lists. There's some options to just insert, you know, like more fancy stuff like a table or an image or things like that. Um, symbols, so all different alphabetical symbols that you might want. Um, so after you make your edited edits, um, you publish changes, and it will basically prompt you um, to put a summary of your edit. And I'm not going to actually say this one, but so I can say like added citation and made formatting pages. Um, 
Um, lots of people see this like this is a minor edit. Um, so adding a citation, adding new text, all those types of things are not minor edits. Um, you can actually made a contribution to Wikipedia. A minor edit might be something like just changing the formatting. So it's like you change something from bold to italic. I mean, you didn't really change any content. So that I might mark as a minor edit. But in general, I mean, don't worry about that. Um, I mean, pretty much any edit you make is probably a major edit um, to Wikipedia. Um, and then when you click public changes, publish changes again, basically those edits will be live um, to Wikipedia. And so everybody can view them immediately. Um, if you want to review your changes and just kind of see those differences that, that you made, um, you can do review changes and you kind of get that highlight version. Um, by default, it's showing me in wiki text, um, but you can also see the visual editor changes and it just kind of highlights everything that you've done um, so that you can confirm that you, you did what you, you thought you were doing. Um, I'm just going to X out of this for now um, and go away from this page. But that's kind of that's kind of the overview of how you edit. Um, the nice thing is that sandbox. Um, you can always go there and just kind of put random things that you're working on. Um, and it's fine. It's just kind of a space. It will log those edits the same way as any other type of edit, but it is not really part of the live Wikipedia um, type of thing. That's kind of my overview of kind of different editing pieces. Are there questions about that or things that you wish you could do that you would like to know more about? Can you remind us images, do they already have to be in Wikimedia images or can we actually upload images? So, I mean, both. Um, so the important thing about images is that images need to be freely licensed. Um, there's kind of some limited options on Wikipedia for things that are not freely licensed. Um, you can make some limited fair use cases, but really only in a case where that is the only option. Um, generally the preference is to use commons and to use freely licensed images. So um, yeah, so you can definitely like go into Wikimedia Commons um, which is I think the best way to get there. Um, so I guess it commons is the media resource. And there's just all sorts of different images. Um, and lots of different museums and organizations have actually like, I mean, taken their freely licensed work and uploaded them here. Um, um, so like any of this stuff, um, as you find it, um, if you get like, basically this file name, um, you can use that file name to basically insert that image into an appropriate Wikipedia article. Um, you can also, if you scroll down on these, you can see if they're used in a Wikipedia article and this one isn't, for instance. And when you say freely licensed, are you saying like CC zero or like, so it has to be- No, so just, or? Um, so generally, I mean, CC by um, is sufficient. Um, uh, there's actually a whole variety of licenses that are allowed. There and is. if you don't sit around and think about Creative Commons, CC is Creative Commons license and there are different flavors of it. And, right. Um, so some of it by would be means attribute attribute attribution. Um, zero be you can do whatever you want, but right there's a right, and it's always kind of a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit extra challenging with art because of the derivative work aspect. Um, so you taking a picture of a piece of art doesn't doesn't release the copyright on the piece of art that you've taken a picture of. Um, so kind of. Looking, I mean, oftentimes for things that are basically in the public domain um, is one option, um, or looking for things that people have in some ways specifically licensed to be used by other people. Um, that's really what they're looking for. Um, there is somewhere 
they have a nice guide. Um, it's just kind of a step-by-step -step guide. Actually, I think if you just go to upload, so I don't have an image to upload, but it actually will do like a, of course I don't have an image to upload, but it kind of does a step-by-step -step, um, mm. kind of help guide you through the process and help you verify that your image um, doesn't have uh, copyright issues. Um, I mean, some of the best options are basically if you're doing, um, I've seen people like do editing events where they have people like say upload food of Thanksgiving dinner, because those are pictures, you know, coming off of your table, you know, in your house. I mean, not, you know, no copyright violations there if you choose to donate those pictures to Wikipedia. Um, the art world gets a little bit more complicated in terms of things that people may have taken pictures of, right? Um, other questions? So I have kind of just some ideas of kind of possible activities for new Wikipedians. Um, and I mean, in general, would kind of like to hear kind of more about the projects or kind of ideas and topics and things like that that folks are potentially interested in um, for this event. Um, folks are interested in doing that. So now I'm going to turn it over to Liz Neely, our next presenter. Liz is the Curator of Digital Experience at the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum. Liz is a human-centered digital strategist focused both on the formation of engaging experiences for museum audiences and on the design of sustainable organization and workflows for museum teams. Liz currently leads two grant-funded projects, one to digitize the fine arts collection and one for extensive organizational-wide training in diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion. She also led a project to publish data from the museum's fine art, archival, historic home, and library collections as open access linked data. Please welcome Liz. Hello, everyone. Um, and uh, it's nice to hear about those uh, projects when we're on with a lot of colleagues, because uh, that was also with uh, with uh, um, with the library research collections and services. So I'm just going to jump in for a quick second and talk about how just give one case study of us at the um, O'Keeffe Museum and how we are integrating um, Wikipedia and why it's important for us. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully. Oh, Liz, you're muted. I accidentally muted you. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't muted the whole time, was I? <laughs> All right. Do you um, do you see my PowerPoint, Shannon? Yes. Great. So, um, just a little bit about um, Shannon mentioned the project that I and um, and the, a large team at the O'Keeffe Museum has been working on to uh, to really link together a lot of our data. And, um, and how this comes together with Wikipedia is both now and aspirational to kind of broaden these narratives. Uh, let me get to the arrow there. So um, just in case some of you aren't familiar, I know some of you are very familiar, but uh, we at the O'Keeffe Museum have the museum galleries, we have the research center, um, and we have historic homes. So the research center has archives, library, um, and of course we have the collections. And so what this all um, brings us to is that um, when we think about art and feminism, especially with, uh, within the O'Keeffe context is that we're really looking at um, this artist and her time, her life and art. So this of course also expands and gives the opportunity to Talk about uh, talk about how art is kind of um, overlaps with process, with um, with uh, correspondence with other um, artists of other kinds across the across the country here in New Mexico and in the world, and um, and so I just wanted to give that context because I think that that also opens us up uh, 
for we're, we're not simply talking about a small amount of people. And I think that one of the possibilities that adds to is that the different connections um, into, um, into, into this artist, into her life and work and the different network of people, especially here in New Mexico. So um, I just had a screenshot here of, this is our collections online and kind of shows how, um, um, how we have art archives, um, homes, uh, her circle, um, people that she had connections with and um, her personal libraries and how this is across a whole um, uh, range of uh, resources, which we see on the right. So, um, so one of the ways that this manifests itself um, is that we in our collections online really try and make this connection with, um, with Wikipedia for, um, for this, this broader kind of, now of course we looked at the Georgia O'Keeffe page and Wiki, uh, Laura showed us the Georgia O'Keeffe page. And this is a way that we, not only we're trying to expand outside of our collection. So Georgia O'Keeffe, we have our collections here. So she's um, depicted in photographs. She's a recipient of correspondence. She's an artist. She's a designer of things within our collection but also looking further out. So in this section that we connect with the collections online, um, the Wikipedia article, um, I'll talk a little bit about this for if there are any um, data nerds in the audience here, um, please let me know in the chat if there are any data nerds out in the um, audience here um, so that we're connecting to certain authorities and that we, um, we um, link to the Wikipedia entry. Because what that gives us is a wider access um, to um, stories. Now, of course, George O'Keefe, we would have a bio and everything, but if you expand out beyond so that we have a broader circle, it may be that actually the Wikipedia community has more to contribute than uh, we can as a museum. So as part of that, when we look at, um, the connections within our data set, so within our collections online, um, one of the things that I've noticed um, is that not, not only, as Laura mentioned, are women underrepresented, but um, you know, women artists, and then even beyond that, if you think about like the Southwest, um, we're not like the Southwest is not always as covered as um, as you would be if um, if you were a New York artist. And so one of the things that really stand, stood out to me, and I think that if um, if you all are part of collections or um, interested in one certain area, you'll be really you'll find things that you're really surprised they're not in Wikipedia too. So um, Doris Bree here was a um, I just uh, picked up the first thing that came up when I searched her on the internet and she was, um, um, she's described here as a leading authority of works of Alfred Stiglitz and George O'Keefe. Um, I, when I look her up, I find articles in Washington Post, in the New York Times, all sorts of things, but no Doris Bree um, page in, um, in Wiki, um, Wikipedia. So that's something that surprises me and that it actually is a key, um, key connector if we look at a broader history of, um, if we have a broader look at art history. Um, in addition, again, when I, when I was mentioning that I find it surprising when people who are really, in, in my view, kind of famous in the, in the Southwest or in New Mexico, and so I brought up uh, Mildred Tolbert here, who um, was a photographer, amazing uh, photographs, if you've seen them. And so, you know, again, no Mildred Tolbert in, Wiki, in Wikipedia. So I think this also just uh, shows that like to, to get at really what was, what are the different connections here within our collections and outside of our collections is really um, identifying these areas that we think would be obvious that were in um, Wikipedia and make sure that, um, that it's in there. Um, so Laura also mentioned and showed you a little bit of, um, of Wikidata. 
And I'm gonna bring this up because then I'll ask to actually share a different screen here. So many screens, I'm so sorry. Um, well, I'll just share everything. And so that we can go here. So as Laura pointed out, um, so we, we end up using, and I wanna um, just re-show this again because tomorrow if you join us, um, so someone like me again, uh, data nerd. Um, so I feel more comfortable updating this structured information. And so this is something that if you're interested in tomorrow, we can look at. And what I think, um, what I wanted to uh, really point out is that as far as, um, there's a lot in here for this one. It, one, of, one of the things that's really important to us at the museum and perhaps at other museums is that um, we want to make sure that um, we're, um, that IDs are the same. And so um, I'm linking, here we go. Um, so that when we talk about George O'Keefe or Maria Chabot or something like this, we are linking this to, um, to kind of what we call in the um, in the information world uh, authority files, so that whenever the name George O'Keefe is mentioned, it is the same George O'Keefe. So one of the things that um, I do a lot is actually um, link up these authority files with Wikidata so that we're actually improving because a lot of these authority files are actually also have the same flaws as um, as as Wikidata in terms that in Wikipedia in terms of they might be heavily biased towards European artists or towards artists in the 17th century, not the 20th century or the 21st century and things like that. So every bit that we can do to kind of make these connections across um, across the um, the web of the um, uh, information universe helps to correct like because we can't easily go into the authority files and just change things. You can, but it's not as easy. So what we can use Wikipedia and Wikidata to kind of start improving and enhancing and diversifying what's out there. I'm going to reshare my PowerPoint then. So um, I hope that uh, I hope that wasn't uh, that was just a quick look at what we use and what we might be looking at tomorrow if you want to look at that.